We're gonna look at Jimmy Rosenberg's playing and we're going to break down his techniques using his solo in the hotel room over it don't mean a thing you can find it on YouTube so pay really close attention to the right hand technique to the downstrokes and upstrokes to the use of little articulations I have to play it a little bit slower than him because he's just such a beast he has amazing technique but let's jump right in the first example is a whole chorus on it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing let's just look at the harmony for one second before we dig into the solo so it's a G minor for four bars <laughs> goes to one measure of either C minor or C7, depends on what version, but he's really thinking about like a C minor 7. F7 for a bar. B flat 6 for a bar. And then it turns back around on a D7. Now he's coming in a measure and a half before the first chord. So he's pretending he's playing on a D7 that's two measures long and he's coming in on the end of two. So it's like one, two, pa. One, two, pa da 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 da. It has a lot of consecutive eighth notes and some triplets in it. So check this out, it goes. That's the first intro lick. And when he gets to that B flat note, the form starts, so. That thing. It's just a D7 with an approach note to the root on the bass. You see that all the time. So imagine this chord just moving a half step into the root. So, and that, that C sharp is on the end of two. One, two. From that point on, it's just this descending lick. The beginning of it looks like a G harmonic minor. And from this point, you're just arpeggiating a G minor. So let's rewind and take a look at the picking. It's two notes per string on the bottom three strings alternating. Down, up, down, up, down, up. That's pretty straightforward. Now you have a little sweep. Down, down, up. And now you have this trill. Now, that's where it gets interesting. Check this out. Down, down, up. And now the gypsy trills are something you have to get together. It goes down, up, pull off, and then at the same, the same time that you slide backwards, you hit it with another downstroke. So. That's the technique. Ba -da 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 now the tricky part is after that downstroke, you have to play another consecutive downstroke on the B string. So that's the hard part for most folks. Rewinding to that, like. this point it's kind of like a G minor 9 arpeggio and then you have that same exact trill down here so you got to get used to it it's down up pull off and then slide with a down stroke notice that your right hand is just playing a swung eighth note you're going down up down down up down and then you're just finding that little pull off in the middle of that motion Gotta get used to that little rhythm. Okay, from this point, it's a long three octave shape. So this is just one, two, flat, three, five in G minor, the next octave. And here you switch to your index. That's a hard move. Here's an enclosure around the root of G minor. Then you're going down a G minor 7 arpeggio. And now it's a G minor 6 when you get down the octave. And then back up a G minor. So up to that point, it's this. And now, 
It's just going down a C minor 7 type arpeggio. Now here's a really tricky bit because it goes down, up, down, up, down, down, down. So a lot of consecutive downstrokes here. And this is the first time you have a break in the rhythm after that C note. So if you're thinking about what's happening here harmonically, we got to that C minor 7, the 2 and the 2, 5. And then we're playing an approach note to the 3rd of that F7, the 5 chord. So this is down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, pull off, down, up, down, up. So I want you to pay extra close attention to this next lick. What you're going to do is play this F7 type arpeggio with an enclosure. So I'm thinking about this is going to the flat 7 of F, 5, 3, and then resolving that to the 1 of the 1 chord of B flat. But I'm doing it this way. So it's down, pull off, pull off, down, up, down, up, down. That's the trick, remember that. And from this point, I'm just playing a sort of G minor 9 arpeggio going up. But I'm using this fingering for it, so. and using that trill at the end, that's the lick. So check this out slowly. Pretty cool. So let's recap that whole lick slowly. You have tabs for this on our Patreon and the rest of the lessons there too. Check this out. One, two, three, four, one, two. check out the next bit. So the second chorus starts like this. It's just approach notes to a G minor triad, which we have for four measures. Approach notes are just chromatic notes below. So he starts it right here and he goes. Notice that the ending is almost identical to the first chorus. So rhythmically, he's starting on the approach note on one. So it's one, two, three, four. That's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So four bars of just those approach notes. From that point, identical and rhythmically identical to what you played in the last A section. But at the end, there's no trill, just end on a G note. This next bit, he's going to the B section. Let's go over the harmony for the B section. We have a B flat seven chord, meaning five of four, going to E flat major. Six, nine is a good choice. Then it goes C seven. These are two bars each, by the way. And then the last chord is F seven for one bar, D seven for one bar. So, So here's the solo for the B section slowly. Now what 
what's going on there. The first chord, it's a B flat seven, but he's pretending it's B flat altered. Now, if you don't know your melodic minor scales, you can always think up a half step minor chord on a dominant chord and it gives you that sound. Now he's adding the ninth to it, like a B minor nine, right? With B flat in the root, which he resolves to an E flat major. So the first bit of the lick is this. It's kind of like a little sweep triplets, but bit the pa pa. That's the first chunk. So this is going to alter. And then from here, you can just visualize a B flat seven with a passing tone between the root and its flatted seven. Now, physically, the next bit, just like you played this, same lick just here on a B flat. Resolving to an E flat, so. So you're just adding a little enclosure around the E flat in the second octave, but it's basically the same thing. From here, down, pull off, pull off, down, up, down, up. Now you get to that C7 chord and you're getting to it a little bit ahead of time, but you're playing this enclosure into it. And then the same kind of idea you played here, just a whole step up on the C7. That thing. And now you get into this game of passing tones descending. You go. Just seeing this shape. A lot of time Django plays that kind of stuff and Jimmy does too. The whole lick up to that bone goes. by playing over the D7, you're going just chromatic from its sharp nine to the root, and then a little chunk of G harmonic minor, which is a good choice on it. Let me play that whole lick slowly. Notice in those three note per string things, it's a lot of down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. It's very challenging. It's kind of hard to do that. Practice that a lot. Here's the next section. If you want to learn the whole solo and have tabs and notation, check it out on our Patreon. The link is below. Thank you for being here. If you dig these three examples, there are four more examples on our Patreon that are way more exciting. They're tabbed out and notated for you. So be sure to join us there. And if not, that's cool too. We'll see you soon.